Okay, let's talk about the New York State Teacher Certification Examinations. And the specific exam we're going to be talking about is the Birth uh, to Grade 2 exam. And uh, even more specifically, we're going to be talking about the math that you very well may encounter on this particular exam. So we're going to take a look at a math practice problem that you should be able to handle pretty nicely if you're fully prepared for the math on the birth to grade two exam in New York. So uh, if you're watching this video, I assume you are preparing uh, for this particular exam and that's excellent. Uh, so before we get started, let me go ahead and introduce myself. My name is John. I'm the founder of Tabla Class Math. I'm also a middle and high school math teacher and over the last several years, I've constructed uh, many online math classes uh, to include a New York State teacher certification exam birth to grade two math test prep course. I'm gonna leave a link uh, to that course in the description of this video, but all my courses that I construct, I really do a lot of research what's on uh, these particular exams, and I try to build a custom curriculum that matches you know, what's going, what you're gonna be tested on, if you will. So don't wanna give you too much math, I wanna give you too, you know, not enough math. Just trying to get the balance quite right because you know, obviously you're busy and you're trying to prepare for these exams. So, you know, there's, uh, I would characterize the math here as being that you're going to need to know for this particular um, exam is basically a high school level math, you know, uh, uh, some algebra, geometry, and of course, all the elementary stuff as well fractions, decimals, place value, um, Venn diagrams, etc. Uh, so, all that basic stuff that you're going to be really, you know, focused on, especially at the grade level that you're going for. Um, but you're also going to have to know some high school level kind of math concepts, algebra and geometry, et cetera. So uh, this particular problem, we're going to be taking a look at um, some, you know, basic, I would call maybe middle school level, um, basic high school level kind of algebra problem. But we'll get to that um, in a second. But I really wanted to, uh, to stress for those of you, if you haven't taken a look at uh the math that's going to be on this particular exam, you should do so because a lot of times, especially at the elementary level, um, you know, even at the middle school level, when it comes to math, uh, teacher candidates will think, oh, I'm only going to be teaching the basic stuff, so I don't really need to know the more advanced stuff. Uh, you, know, you really got to take a look at not only the, what's going to be on it with respect to math, other, uh, you know, subjects as well. But I'm sure you've already done that because you are going to be an awesome teacher and you're preparing just by virtue of you watching this video. So let's get to this problem. And the way I like to do these uh, little problems is one, I'm gonna give you the problem. Um, then I'm gonna let you, let you uh, those of you out there that know how to do it, give you an opportunity to solve it. Then I'm gonna give a hint. So if you don't know what to do, I'm gonna give a little bit of a hint and then I'm going to solve the problem. Okay, so here is uh, the problem. Let's get to it. So you got something going on here. Okay, there's this and there's this. And I'm telling you that the perimeter of this rectangle is 30 centimeters. So the perimeter of this rectangle is 30 centimeters. And here we have the length and the width, x and 2x. Okay, so I'm telling you it is a rectangle. All right, and here's the perimeter. I'd like you to find the actual dimensions here, okay, of this rectangle, all right? So in other words, you're gonna to have to solve for x. Okay, so um, hopefully most of you out there can uh, understand the problem, you understand the word perimeter, okay? So you're like, oh, he's talking about perimeter. Uh, so that means something to me. I got all the information I need. So go ahead and pause the video and go for it. Okay, so if you're listening to me, you want to hear a hint, and there is no problem there. So let's talk about what the hint is. Well, first of all, we need to know um, what the perimeter uh, means, right? Well, the perimeter of a, a figure, okay, and it doesn't have to be a rectangle, it could be a triangle, it could be any kind of shape. Perimeter is just basically the distance, the sum total distance around that shape, okay? So in this case, where we have to go kind of around. Just think of this as, uh, let's say you were gonna install a, a fence around your vegetable garden, okay? You, you would wanna know how much fence you need to buy. You would be, oh, I need this, uh, this length, I need this distance, I need this distance, and this distance, I add them all up, then I go to Home Depot and I pick up that amount of fence. That's the concept of perimeter, okay? So uh, 
with that being said, I'm saying that the total perimeter, okay, around this rectangle is 30 centimeters. Now, I use this word rectangle very specific, very specifically, and you can see here that with these little boxes in the corner, these are right angles, 90 degree angles. So this is another way of stating that this is a rectangle. So I didn't have to tell you this is a rectangle, but you can see it looks like a rectangle. But by virtue of me putting these little squares in, this is really stating that this is a rectangle and not some other kind of quadrilateral like, like so. Okay. Um, and that's important because, uh, because it's a rectangle, opposite sides are the same. Okay. So in other words, whatever distance this is, and this happens to be 2x, this side is also 2x. All right. And this side here is x. So this side over here is x. So that's a definition of a rectangle. And so now I'd say, okay, the perimeter is, I'm going to take this side, I'm going to add it to this, and then add it to this, and then add it to this, and the sum total is going to be 30. So now let's go ahead and get into actually solving this now. But anytime, if you feel like, oh, okay, I get what to do, go ahead and pause the video and actually, uh, you know, do it. But let's go ahead and, and solve this now. So I'm going to add up all the sides. So it's going to be x plus 2x plus x plus another 2x. And by definition of what the perimeter is, I'm saying that the perimeter of this rectangle is 30, 30 centimeters to be uh, more precise. But we'll, we'll make a basic equation. Um, yeah, because now these four sides, when we add them up, it's 30, okay? So this is an illustration of using algebra to solve a basic geometry problem. Okay, so if you understand what I just did, all right, that's excellent. And what I want to do is encourage you to now pause the video and finish out the rest of the problem. Okay, in other words, I'm I want to see if you know how to solve this basic equation. All right, so let's go ahead and solve this uh, equation now. So I have an x, a 2x, another x, and 2x here. So how many x's do I have here all in sum total? Well, this is 1, 2, and 1, and 2. I have 6 x's. So this is going to be 6x is equal to 30. And how do I solve this basic equation? Well, I need to divide both sides of the equation by 6. So I get x is equal to 5. Okay. So x is equal to 5, but 5 what? Well, our units of measure were uh, centimeters. So this is 5 centimeters. This is 5 centimeters. And this side is 2x. It's twice whatever the x value was. So if this is 5, this is going to be 2x or 10 centimeters. 10 centimeters, okay? All right, now let's just check our work here. If I take 5 plus 10 plus 5 plus 10, does that add up to 30? So let's see here. 5 plus 10 plus 5 plus 10, right? I'm finding the perimeter. So this would be 15, and this is 15, and 15 and 15 is 30. So it checks out. Okay, so if you got this problem right, okay, and you kind of took a different approach, um, that's fine. Okay, that's good. All right. However, uh, you need to still um, uh, understand the, the whatever process you, in other words, if you got this answer right, but you're like, mm, yeah, I kind of thought about it and I, yeah, I kind of figured it out in my head, that's okay because this is a real basic problem. But really the better way of solving this problem is having a process, right? It's like if you don't want your students to say, hey, what's the answer? You were like, this is the answer. Well, how did you get to the answer? I'm like, well, I'm not quite sure. Uh, but this is the answer. And even though they're correct, <laughs> you know, you want to see the thought process. You want to see the, the analysis, if you will. Okay. So, uh, so kind of like, you know, getting it right is good, but get, you know, if you got it right and you understood, you know, if you had a process, you know, you built an equation, you understand what was going on. That's the best. All right. Now, if you struggle with this problem and you forgot, um, had a new problem like this, don't panic, all right? Just use this as feedback, okay? Uh, clearly, you know, you're watching this video because you're preparing for the New York State teacher certification exam, birth to grade two. You're trying to do well on it, all right? So that's that's excellent. So, um, you know, give yourself time to learn math. That's the biggest thing I can really stress to you is I think everyone's looking for shortcuts to, to brush up on math. You know, there really doesn't, you know, there's nothing, I'm, 
I'm not going to tell you right now. <laughs> I've been doing this for uh, several decades. There is no shortcut to learn math. You know, if you see like, hey, in three days or less, you can master all high school math. I mean, that's ridiculous, right? I mean, that's why we have middle school. That's a couple, uh, three years, high school, four years. I mean, it takes years to build up a lot of these skill sets, okay? And it's a continuum. You know, you start at elementary level and you go to middle school level and high school level. So, um, but nevertheless, you know, you obviously have taken this math. If you're taking this exam, you have taken this math somewhere along the way, okay? So uh, another thing I would stress too is this. If you're math phobic, if you like hate math or you're scared of math, you know, take a deep breath, all right, and just kind of relax. That's the first thing. And then get yourself into a good study program so you can focus and improve skill by skill. But um, but there's definitely going to be, you know, some decent amount of algebra and geometry um, and those type of topics, you know, that you um, uh, very well are going to encounter on this particular New York State teacher certification exam. So let's go ahead and wrap up this video. Um, again, I'm going to leave a link in the description of this video for my New York State uh, teacher certification exam, uh, birth to grade two math test prep course. Very comprehensive. I think you'll really like it. Uh, if you don't have a, something else that you're studying from, this will definitely help you. Um, if you're new to my YouTube channel, I've been on YouTube uh, for a good 12 years, at least at the time of this video. I already have hundreds of videos on my channel that can help uh help you prepare for this particular exam. So if you like my teaching style, um, hopefully you'll check that out and become a subscriber. I'm posting new stuff all the time. If you enjoyed the video, definitely appreciate a thumbs up and leave me some feedback. You know, what draws you into teaching? Um, you know, was it a teacher that you had and you're, you're, you know, somewhere along the line that made a big impact on you, you know, uh, or maybe you're coming from another career. Okay. It's, there's so many different paths these days to become a teacher. Um, I think that's uh, awesome, okay? And by the way, too, I mean, for myself, you know, I've done other things other than teaching, okay? But that doesn't mean, you know, I think we need a mix of teachers. We need people that were former real estate agents or, you know, retired military or who knows what. And we need those people that have come from high school to teaching right into teaching. So it doesn't, it, as far as I'm concerned, I've worked with uh, great teachers from both type of backgrounds. One thing has nothing to do with the other. Really, it's about gaining experience. So, you know, half of being a teacher is all your professional education, getting your degree, your certifications. But the other half and really where the exciting part of uh, really where you're truly uh, learn to become a teacher is just on the job training or actually doing the job. So I like to always stress when I'm speaking to teacher candidates out there is to latch on to those veteran teachers. Um, and they're going to help you really understand, you know, how to teach. Okay. I .e. working with students directly working with students, uh, parents, administration, all the other issues and stuff that yes, you study, you know, in a book, but it's all theory until you actually do the job. Learn from those veteran teachers until you gain experience yourself. It takes time to get experience in more than just one year, okay? Don't, you know, uh, don't just say, oh, this is too hard. Give yourself time. You've already made a huge commitment to, to get to it because it is, you know, you know, everyone has a first year teaching story. If you haven't taught for one year, maybe you've done some student teaching, but, you know, it's challenging. It's challenging. And what I love about teaching and... Uh, I always get a kick out of it is there's a lot of people out there. And unfortunately, it's kind of the case where, you know, uh, there's a stereotype or the general public might be like, oh, the teachers got it easy. They got the summers off. And, you know, man, if I was a teacher, I hear this all the time. If I was a teacher, I'd have those kids snap too and everyone would get straight A's and I'd have this like, you know, they would, everyone, it would be awesome. I would be in total control. Da, 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 da. <laughs> Listen, uh, I I was in the Marine Corps. I've done a lot of things in my life. Teaching, very challenging. Okay. Yeah, it will, it will, and those folks that you, you got to take that in stride because you're going to hear that um, as a teacher. <laughs> I mean, people who are not teachers, in other words, the only people are going to really relate to teachers as, as other teachers. It's just kind of the way it is. So take pride in what you do. I mean, it's a, you are in a critical profession um, uh, in our society, and you should have all the pride 
that you deserve and you have earned by getting through your degree, your certification, and all this experience. Anyways, that's the way I feel about it as a teacher. Uh, but with that being said, I definitely wish you all the best in your education career and on this particular um, assessment. Thank you for your time and have a great day.